All righty, so I have a really interesting video for you guys today. It is completely a discussion based video. So keep an eye on those comments down below and get ready to comment along with the video. I'm looking for a discussion on what you guys think. Um, as myself and my friends in our discord server have been discord server have been discussing this over the last couple of days. Um, and I was starting to like actually get on board with it. For those that don't know, I'm very against the idea of Wonderland being a test park. I've never been on board with that concept of Canada's Wonderland being the test park for the Cedar Fair chain. But the more I've been talking about it with my friends, the more I'm like, there's an interesting story going on here. And I'm going to discuss it today. And I want you guys to comment down below what you think. If you agree, disagree, drag me, throw me, whatever you want to do, do it down below. And I'm going to try and respond to as many comments as possible. But before I get into the video, I just want to let you guys know um, we've launched our members only um, activity on this YouTube channel. So if you'd like to become a member, uh, just click the join button down below. Um, there's several uh, membership programs available down below and we are posting vlogs, um, exclusive vlogs for you guys who are members onto the members page, exclusive pictures. We've even uploaded a construction update just for our members. Um, and some plan co-creations for various parks as well. Content that hasn't really made it onto the channel is uploaded there as well. So uh, some pretty cool stuff. You also get to use emojis, custom emojis, when you're commenting on our videos and stuff like that. So it's super cool um, along uh, with that. So if you want to support us, definitely become a member down below. Just hit the join button. Um, uh, thanks so much. So let's get right into it. Uh, what am I going to talk about? So for those of you that don't know, Wonderland first introduced a uh, giga coaster at Canada's Wonderland back in 2012, and that was BNM's first giga coaster. So Wonderland already had sought out BNM and asked for a custom giga coaster, I guess a 300 foot hyper coaster, if you want to put it that way, because BNM doesn't really offer the giga coaster as a product. It seems to be just a Cedar Fair thing right now. We don't know if that's actually the case. But from what we hear, uh, Canada's Wonderland specifically had asked for it, and BNM had given it to Wonderland because of a owed debt due to the old um, BNM invert not being able to be built at Canada's Wonderland. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily true. That rumor has always been in my head. Like, I don't necessarily know if that's entirely true. Uh, there's no merit to it. No one's actually asked and gotten the real answer. Eventually, one day, I <laughs> maybe I'll get up the courage and just ask someone at the park if there's any truth to that rumor. But nonetheless, Canada's Wonderland was the first park to get a B&M Giga Coaster. Um, and then thereafter, we got a 4D Dark Ride Coaster, um, a first of its kind as well with a unique drop track. It was designed partially in-house and built in-house, mixed with Triotech as well. Um, so that was quite interesting. And then after that, we got Yukon Striker. So Yukon Striker is a unique dive coaster. And a lot of people might be like, it's just a dive coaster. Well, no, a lot of the elements were asked um, and designed by Canada's Wonderland, uh, like the vertical loop and the ending helix to represent the ride that it currently or it <laughs> used to sit in its plot of land before. So that's where it gets interesting. Every coaster that Wonderland's been building since the Cedar Fair takeover essentially has had some sort of uniqueness to it to separate it from other parks and even parks in their own chain. It seems like Wonderland likes to order a B&M coaster or a product and push that a little bit out of its comfort zone. So that brought us to the question, maybe Wonderland is going to continue to get B&M roller coasters and we're going to see these unique elements or the, the unique um variations of that coaster compared to the sister parks or parks in the chain or even outside of the chain. So for example, maybe we'll see a wing coaster coming to Canada's Wonderland with some sort of uniqueness to it that we haven't seen yet, just like Yukon Striker. It's an out and back dive coaster with a vertical loop and a weird helix at the end, pretty much custom designed by Canada's Wonderland if you want to go into that detail, because if you take out the two elements that Canada's Wonderland had asked for to be a part of this dive coaster to make it unique and get it out and back, it's really just a basic dive coaster with the second drop, the zero G, um, the two Immolins, and the um, the main drop. So everything else that Wonderland needed for that dive coaster is what pushed it past um, a basic dive coaster, essentially. So it's an interesting topic of discussion because it brings up the question, then what's next? What, what coaster could be next for Canada's Wonderland? 
What's that going to look like? Does that mean we're going to continue to see B&M roller coasters at Canada's Wonderland? And are they going to continue to push the envelope in terms of similar products at different parks? So are we going to get a wing coaster with unique elements? Are we going to get a flying coaster with unique elements or, you know, other models like a floorless coaster with unique elements? What what else is Canada's Wonderland going to order? Or are we just going to go back to basic coasters like a mock double launch similar to Copperhead Strike at Carowinds? Definitely want to hear from you guys about that. So at this point, comment down below. Do you think Canada's Wonderland's next coaster could be a B&M roller coaster, like a, a wing coaster with unique elements? Or do you think we're going to go down the road of a mock double launch coaster very similar to Copperhead Strike at Carowinds? Again, nothing about this video is me stating this is what's going to happen. Nothing about me in this video is stating that this is happening for a reason. These are just things that we've noticed as a group about the past of Cedar Fair investing in Canada's Wonderland, it seems like they're building and testing out products. So for example, the staggered seating on Behemoth, tested on Behemoth, the B&M Giga roller coaster, tested at Wonderland, um, Wonder Mountain's Guardian, very unique product, unfortunately that failed. <laughs> Yukon Striker, very unique dive coaster introduced at Canada's Wonderland. In fact, there was a huge delay with that product as well, and we got confirmation for that. That was supposed to be built back in 2016. We ended up getting it in 2019. Um, it was shelved for a couple years, and from what I understand of that, again, this is just speculation and rumors, and from what we've heard, that was to enhance the theming and introduce Frontier Canada to Canada's Wonderland the proper and right way while investing into Cedar Point for their hotel edition that year. Or renovation, sorry. So it brings up a great discussion. What's next? Uh, it, like, it, it, truthfully, are, are we going to continue to see unique, different coasters coming to Canada's Wonderland? Are we going to see a completely new product that hasn't been announced yet coming to Canada's Wonderland as our next coaster? Or is it going to be a wing coaster that has unique elements? Or is it just going to be a basic wing coaster? Or is it going to be a launched wing coaster? Or is it just going to be a mock double launch? <laughs> Again, there's so many possibilities. And from what we've seen... Again, a lot of people are like, Brendan, from what we've seen from Canada's Wonderland, can you truly say that you're going to get a mock double launch or that you're just going to get a basic product bought and purchased from a roller coaster company? And when I sat there and thought about it, I was like, truthfully, yeah, the, pr the proof is in the pudding. Like we have gotten unique roller coasters at Canada's Wonderland since Cedar Fair took over or at least some uniqueness to those roller coasters. And then if, even if you look at our flat ride lineup, it gets even more interesting. A lot of people don't realize how spoiled Canada's Wonderland is. Every year, Canada's Wonderland gets a flat ride of some sort or a kid flat ride. And then sometimes we even get two flat rides, an adult flat ride and a kid flat ride. And then we get our roller coasters and then they slowly invest in other things during those years as well. So Canada's Wonderland's truly a spoiled park if you look at it as a big picture. And our flat rides that Cedar Fair have been adding are very unique as well. It's almost like they're trying to make Canada's Wonderland like a really unique place where coaster enthusiasts go, you know, they may not have Steel Vengeance or Iron Gwazi or, you know, the best roller coaster um, in the world. And they may not have, have even have a roller coaster that's in the top five or ten in the world, but it's got some really unique things that I can't get in any other park. So I'm going to go there or, you know, Americans even thinking that way, because obviously they're not after the the roller coaster enthusiasts in terms of a market because they equate to literally less than 1% of their attendance. But what could they possibly go be going after trying to separate themselves from other um, roller coaster or theme park companies out there? Like, you know, very different from a Six Flags park, very different from their other um, Cedar Fair parks as well. Something unique. And that's truly what I think that Canada's Wonderland and Cedar Fair are trying to do with Canada's Wonderland. And it's very interesting to think about what could possibly be next at Canada's Wonderland. And the more I thought about it, the more I've just, you know, I get more confused and lost. As you can tell in this video, again, a lot of you may be listening to this video expecting that I'm giving you facts. It's a discussion based video. A lot of my videos coming out over the next couple days are going to be discussion based just because I don't have anything to back up a lot of this. And again, any of you that watch my videos know I always say take things with a grain of salt whenever I need you to take things with a grain of salt and that this is an opinion and not a fact. This uh, this video is entirely an opinion and a discussion and nothing about it is fact. And definitely look forward to hearing from you guys down below what you honestly think about everything that I just discussed in this video. Because Canada's Wonderland's got a really weird investment history since Cedar Fair took over. And the more I thought about it, the more I was just like, 
<laughs> again, same question. What's next? So again, last question to you guys. What do you think is next at Canada's Wonderland in terms of a roller coaster and even a flat ride? What do you think's next? Can't wait to read your comments down below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye.